Minister for Imperial Airways, a Briton stake in the forthcoming struggle. <laughs> Movie turn aloft in a 150 mile an hour plane. It is soon outdistanced by the amazingly powerful flying boat. The first of the new Empire flying boats is on the slipway, a giant luxury liner. The history of flight is the history of Dubai. Once, long ago, we ran before the wind and lifted ourselves up on the wings of a vision. To see beyond horizons. To think beyond all possibilities. To salute the future. My grandfather told me that once, long ago, there was nothing more than a small village in a desert. And this village had better odds of melting into the sands than rising as a city. But it did. This is a story of transformation, courage, and vision. Sheikh Saeed began his rule in 1912, at a time when the pearl industry was still thriving. But by 1930, this had collapsed, and the Sheikh realized that his people would face poverty and uncertainty. Sheikh Saeed had to change their destiny and explore other opportunities. <laughs> Sheikh Saeed did not crumble in the face of misfortune. Instead, he rose to the challenge. Sheikh Saeed, rahimahullah, is a part of the history of Dubai. It means from the history of Dubai in Dubai. Sheikh Saeed was known by the power and 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 the power. At this time in history, a sand runway in Sharjah provided the only landing place in the Gulf for British planes. But things were about to change. Big developments are pending on the world's air routes, and the new all-metal flying boats being built at Rochester for Imperial Airways are Britain's stake in the fourth... <laughs> هي البداية الحقيقية لإنشاء الطيران باعتبار أن نزلت أول طائرة تجارية في أوردبي. My grandfather once told me that when he was out in the desert, he heard a rumble in the sky. And then there was a big splash. This was the arrival of the first flying boat. The passengers had just undertaken a 4,000 mile trip from England to India in short hops. And one of the hops was Dubai. Dubai is the first place in this area to bring the ships to the sea. On the other side of the creek in Dara, there was a small jetty which was known as BOAC Jetty. And the reason for that is that when the passengers landed from the flying boats at night, they landed on this small jetty. The real purpose of these flying boats was not passengers, it was for mail. In 1937, the British government approached the ruler of Dubai with a request for landing rights. They were willing to make small payments to the Sheikh so that the flying boats could land on the creek. 
After negotiations, Sheikh Saeed bin Maktoum al Maktoum accepted the agreement, and the rest is history. Or should we say, the rest is the future? The destiny of the little Sheikhdom was about to change forever. Sheikh Saeed was the Iran with Britannia, with the fact that the conflict that was with the others, that the English would enter into our country, would enter into our country. ولكن هو رأى أن هذا بيكون مصلحة للبلد وللشعب. فتعتبر أول اتفاقية جوية مفتوحة في سماء مفتوح توقع من قبل أي دولتين في العالم. إنشاء مطار في ذلك الوقت في عهد الشيخ سعيد بن مكتوم هاي في الحقيقة يعني دليل على بعد نظر هذا الحاكم. Over his lifetime, Sheikh Saeed ensured the growth of his nation and he nurtured the emergence of a modern city. By 1947, aviation technology had become more sophisticated. Planes could now fly further and the hops and stops in the creek were no longer necessary. And what did this mean? The flying boats stopped landing in the creek. My grandfather said it would be years before the sounds of planes filled the skies of the Emirate again. In 1958, Sheikh Saeed passed away and Sheikh Rashid became the ruler of Dubai. When Sheikh Rashid changed the وصارت نظرة الشيخ راشد أوسع لأن البلد كبرت. شيخ راشد was a ruler who would dream up a future and achieve it. He foresaw that the oil reserves would not last and he had to diversify the economy. He invested in ports, big industry, infrastructure and building a global trading hub. To this end, Sheikh Rashid embarked on a string of challenges that was to shape Dubai. He taught his nation how today's possibilities were yesterday's impossibilities. He used to say, some men see things the way they are and say, why? I see things that never were and say, why not? قام Sheikh Rashid bin Saeed بإنشاء مطار على اليابسة. It took one year to build the airport. هاي المطار كان عبارة عن مبنى وعن مدرج المدرج كان معمول من الطين والرمل المضغوط. And then Sheikh Rashid inaugurated it on the 30th of September 1960. يعد مفخر الشيخ راشد بن سعيد المكتوم حاكم دبي في سنة 61 بدأت الحركة تزيد سنة عن 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 سنة. The airport project was so successful that in 1970, it was decided to expand the structure of Dubai Airport. Sheikh Rashid established Dubai as a hub of regional aviation. فقام الشيخ راشد بن سعيد ببناء أول مطار حديث في 31 مايو من عام 1971 في ذاك الوقت كان في هناك من من عارضوا هذه الفكره فكروا ان هذا المطار كبير جدا ودبي تريد تقريبا 50 الى 100 سنه لكي تشغل هذا المطار. Had this large terminal and no airplane to speak of. People were classifying it as a white elephant. But against the odds Aviation was growing. A mid-sized international airport was flourishing because Sheikh Rashid's open skies policy allowed any airline to fly in and land without restrictions. Sheikh Rashid's steadfast determination to enlarge the airport had been scorned, but it was proving to be a triumph. In 1985, 
Sheikh Rashid's son, Sheikh Muhammad, initiated the creation of an airline belonging to Dubai, and Emirates was born. With a two-plane fleet, Emirates took to the skies. كان أول الفكرة إن نحن ننشئ شركة طيران تقوم بأشياء محلية فقط يعني تربط منطقة الخليج بالمنطقة المجاورة لكن سيدي صاحب السمو الشيخ محمد بن راشد قال أنا أريد شركة طيران عالمية. So what we see today and what we'll see in the future is an airline that spans five continents. It's an airline that has become the envy and the talk of the aviation world. And it is an airline will recall and recount. There has been nothing like it in the history of civil aviation. Today, we are in the year 2012. Dubai, the country, will reach more than 55 million passengers. The aviation industry is the vital heart of the economy, pumping lifeblood into the country and contributing 28% to Dubai's GDP. This is the fastest growing airport hub in the world that flourished into a phenomenon beyond imagination. With the addition of Fly Dubai in 2009, the vision is expanding. Dubai Airport will reach a capacity of 90 million travelers in the next six years. Since the Open Skies Agreement, over 170 bilateral air service agreements have been signed. These agreements, the majority being liberal, have secured traffic rights for all airlines in Dubai. And soon, the Al Maktoum International Airport in Jebel Ali will meet the requirements of the future, handling 160 million travelers by 2020. صار دبي يشكل عصب الحياة ليس لدبي وحدها ولكن للإمارات أيضا. And I think the Open Skies Agreement that was signed by Sheikh Zayed and the British government 25 years ago is a fantastic demonstration of what is great about Dubai. الطيران هو الذي جاب الخير لدبي. This is my city, burning bright in arcs of light and sweeps of spires. This is the land of dreamers, still rising on the wings of an age-old vision, where a sheikh once built his dream for a nation to push the world to believe in the impossible, to rethink the achievable beyond physics beyond imagination. As we launch forward into uncharted space, we remember to look back with pride, honoring those who gave us this gift. <laughs>